Um, one of the things that many people may not know about UNE Online uh, is that we have incredibly robust enrollment in one of our non-matriculated programs, and that's the Science Prerequisites for Health Professionals uh, program. We offer a number of courses under that umbrella. And um, so it's, it's important that uh, we focus on support models that are not just built around students enrolling in a full program graduate or degree or certificate, uh, and that we have different infrastructure in place for students that are coming to us to just take an individual course or two. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Melissa Farino, Josh McFarland, and Ashley Tellier to talk about implementing a successful support model for non-matriculated students. Good morning, everybody. Almost afternoon. Uh, my name is Melissa Farino, and I am the Assistant Director of Student Services, and I oversee the enrollment and student support for this program. Um, and this is... My name is Josh McFarland. I am one of the Student Service Advisors for our Science Prerequisite Program. And my name is Ashley Tellier. I was one of the Student Service Advisors, but recently transitioned into a Process Manager role based on some of the work I've done with the program. So what we will discuss in this presentation. So first, we're gonna give you a um, overview of the Science Prerequisite Program. Um, so we'll discuss what we offer, how we offer it, and some highlights on what our typical student is. Um, we're also gonna shed some light on some program trends. So give you a little insight on what our student population really looks like. Second, we're gonna be talking about developing a communication plan. So starting at the beginning, our struggles um, with that, we dealt with some internal struggles, why this project was needed, our goals, but also how we structured that plan. So what our strategic goals were, um, et cetera. Um, third, we'll be talking about certain communication processes that were updated uh, with the help of the communication plan and sort of looking at a before and after with those processes. So to begin, looking at the program overview and the trends. So we are a non-matriculated population that is specific to science prerequisite courses. So there are 17 science and health courses that we offer within this program. With this program, something that's really different than the matriculated side is the accessibility of the courses. We have start dates the first and third Wednesday of every month, and all of the courses are 16 week time frame. Um, so you, once you begin the course on the, let's say the first Wednesday of the month, you have 16 weeks from there to complete the course. Um, with that, it is also self-paced, meaning students don't need to be logged in at any particular day or time, and it's possible for them to complete the course in less than 16 weeks if they want. Our typical student is a student that is already completed a degree, or a student that maybe didn't get the grade they needed in a science course to get into a various uh, prerequisite course or a medical program that they're trying to get into. Um, we do also see the average age of our student is about 18 to 34 years old. Um, and along with this program, there are no applications. So students don't need to apply for these courses. We don't need any transcripts. Um, there is really nothing that prevents them from being able to register for our courses. So some program trends. So first we wanted to showcase where students putting these courses towards. So obviously we're marketing to health professions and it looks as from this chart that that is the case. Um, our biggest student population is putting them towards physician assistants. Others you'll see pharmacy, um, nursing, nurse anesthesia, MD, DO, veterinary, dental, etc. Um, I just wanted to highlight that second column you'll see listed as NA. That we're describing as not applicable. So that student population could be finishing up their bachelor's degree. Um, they could be needing a refresher course. So they're not necessarily putting these courses towards a graduate program but I would say the majority of our population is. And looking at the registration months, again, like I mentioned, their start date's the first and third Wednesday of every month, so there's very much an ebb and flow in terms of how the courses are um, attended and the registration numbers. We see a lot of uh, depending on the application deadlines that students are trying to complete, so as you would expect, summer is really a high popular time for when students will take our courses. Uh, typically, there's about an average of 900 students each month, so that's across two start dates that are taking our courses. Currently, we have about a thousand or more students enrolled in our courses in which we'll talk about um, later on how we support those students as well but we work both on the enrollment side but also the support side 
So some of the registration trends we wanted to make sure we were aware of um, is essentially how our students act when they come into our program. So these students typically hold off on their registration until about one to two days before the course starts, which is our deadline. Um, but these courses are available the entire semester to register for. So while they are available to the student, we are seeing that they're waiting until that end point to really become a, or, um, enrolled in our courses. And then these students also sign up for more courses they can handle most of the time. Um, we typically suggest one to two courses where they are upper level um, undergraduate. And and what we find is that these students with their strict deadlines are trying to register for three to five courses on one start date, um, which can be extremely concerning. And then these students would also like to utilize financial aid to pay for their courses. Where we are non-matriculated, per the Department of Education, we're not eligible for financial aid funds, so we have to remind the students that these are out-of-pocket costs that they're paying. And then some of the student trends we found is that they do have strict deadlines that they're trying to meet, which is why they come to our program where it's self-paced and it's got that uniqueness to it. And then they also expect to complete them at a much more accelerated rate than we, rate than we intend them to. So while we do see an average of 14 to 16 weeks needed to complete our courses, most of the students are trying to complete them in less than eight weeks. Developing a communication plan. So this was something that our program did not have, um, unlike, or like the matriculated programs that have more of the structure for the enrollment process and the support process, this was something that we found was definitely needed, especially as the enrollment in the program grew and the college grew as a whole. Um, we began to create this model as a way to structure, again, a non, kind of a non-structured program. So developing both proactive communication for the enrollment side and also proactive communication for the support side, instead of working constantly on more of a um, reactive side. Part of our goal with this was to create an internal resource so that the university and the college had a better sense of the communication and the outreach that was being done with these courses and how we were assisting them. Also to be proactive, similar to the matriculated side, so kind of looking at the matriculated model and seeing how that fit with these courses. And then also being able to track communication so that moving forward, if students were returning to us taking other courses or if something went, um, went on along their path within our courses, we were able to see what the communication was like prior to that. So some items that we looked at when considering this communication plan was one, our non-matriculated struggles that students might face. So while the program is unique with the self-paced format, students can sometimes see this as an easier route to complete a course rather than it being an additional struggle. Um, so in addition to that, we have the two start dates every month, so they feel they can just start at any point and then finish it whenever they want to, but we have to remind them that it is a still full semester traditional course. Um, and then the flexible registration. So they can register at any time. So we have to make sure we're in communication with them about when those deadlines are and when their course would begin. Some internal obstacles that we faced on our side um, was with Blackboard, our learning management system, and communicating with these students. We can't mass review their coursework, especially where we're dealing with so many students registered at one time. And then we weren't also able to sync any of the communications that we were having with the students inside the course. So those were solely housed in there, and we couldn't kind of switch a student off to another advisor if we had to um, without having to relay all of that information ourselves. And then with Salesforce, in the beginning, we weren't utilizing utilizing this just because we weren't av available the aspects to us. Um, so what we found out is that we weren't able to mass send any emails with the communications that we came up with. It's a, an entirely manual process. Um, and then in addition to that, the ability to sync all of those emails at once, we have to sync them all individually as we send them. So some questions we wanted to look at were how to incorporate the, result, the revolving aspects of our courses. So the 16 week start date time frame, the two start dates a month, um, the variable finish times that these students have and then what cases we could improve the current communication plan that we had, um, and then what processes we wanted to implement or improve as well. All right, so how we structured the plan. So we discuss how we were going to begin, what were the goals with this, and then what our difficulties and internal obstacles were. So we developed a purpose pretty generic that we wanted a framework. We wanted a detailed um, document that listed out each of these processes. Um, for how we were being proactive and reactive with our student population. Um, it's also great for, for new, new hires. It's a, a great orientation aspect of the job. Um, we developed three strategic goals, so to improve enrollment from the prospective side and student success and completion from the enrolled student side. Um, as I said, we deal with both populations. 
Layout wise, again, we felt it was important to separate out what, how we were proactively outreaching to students and then the reactive communication as well. Um, separating again, perspective versus enrolled, two differently, um, different populations, and then detailing out each process as well. So not just listing, we're emailing these students on this day, but the step-by-step, -step, what the actual detailed um, process is. And so with that, we felt it was important to create an actual model um, chart, you could say, as well. So again, from the layout I just discussed, um, the laser works on this. No? <laughs> so you will see on the left all of our enrolled student communication, and on the right our perspective. So those are separated out by proactive and reactive communication, and then what each process was under that. And those three items at the bottom, you'll see our three strategic goals, enrollment, completion, and success. So this is just an easy, quick way to provide someone with insight on what our communication model looks like. So after the initial implementation of our communication plan, we wanted to begin updating our processes to add in some more involved steps. Um, so our initial implementation with the communication plan was a welcome letter. And this welcome letter was pre-sent out by ITS with the information that we provided and that they were able to pull from our system. So this email provided students with their username and password, links to setting up their accounts, and information on accessing their courses. Some of the issues that we faced with this is that not all times was the email being sent out and then we were receiving messages from students saying they weren't receiving this information, they didn't know how to access their course and it was creating a lot of roadblocks for them in beginning their course progress. Um, so our new process is that we manually send out that welcome letter ourselves every Monday and Friday where it is full of vital information for the student. And then we also added in some um, proactive steps in emailing them five times throughout their semester with us or their course time with us. So these involved a week one email which is just the introduction of who the student advisor is, what they're there for and their role and how they can assist them. On week two we remind them of their 40% refund deadline because students have a very strict deadline time with us. And then weeks three and seven are both check-in emails as well as week seven being a withdrawal reminder email. And week 14 is a course end reminder email. So what we saw with the improvements of this process is that students were more aware of their deadlines and their time frames instead of them reaching out um, past the point of withdrawal or not being aware of this information, we were giving it to them ahead of time. That way they could be more accountable and we could also reflect back and say, we did send you this information at this time. So when students come back and said they never received it, it is available. In addition, the welcome letter serves really as that kind of closing piece on the enrollment side. So when the student is finally um, in, finally beginning their course and it's really a key communication piece for these students because we work we primarily work with the students um, in terms of everything such as the email and even logging in to try to register for the courses and it's more more like other offices within the university are connecting with us to learn more about the um, proper assistance needed for some of the students too so these um, so this whole communication process was really key and and having the students be more successful within our courses from the enrollment side all the way to the support Side. So with this new communication plan in mind of our proactive outreach, we really wanted to sparse out when we would be sending these emails, especially considering the number of start dates that we have at a time, how many students are enrolled. So what we did is we went through a calendar and mapped out every single day that we would have to send an email and decided they would be sent on Mondays, um, just with our registration deadline days and the revolving process of the start dates. And what we found is about every Monday we send between one to four mass emails and that contains anywhere from 200 to 800 emails per Monday. Um, so we realized it was going to be a very large process and a very heavy manual process, but we've found that it's been a huge asset to our students. I will say Ashley has done a huge piece of this and it is very manual and time consuming and due to the number of students that we have at one time at one registration start date, calling every one of those students is just not feasible, especially of a team of three. Uh, so we have found by doing an outreach on this way via email for the support side is more beneficial to kind of touch everybody and then we have further conversations or people will respond to us if they have further, que um, further questions at that time too. All right, so implementing a student support ticket system. So this purpose was overall to improve the enrolled student primarily email communication um, that's housed in Salesforce, as you guys are aware, our CRM. Um, as Ashley talked about one of our internal op schools was Blackboard, our learning management software. Um, to give you kind of a, a quick brief on what our process was before the plan, um, 
through Blackboard, students would email us um, through their course. We would receive a notification through our email. We'd have to click the link, click into Blackboard, respond to the students in there. They received our, our information, however, Blackboard and Salesforce are not, they do not have that compatibility. So all of that communication was housed in Blackboard, which is great, but it primarily needed to be housed in Salesforce, our CRM. So what we developed was um, the ticket system, which we mirrored what we had was a technical support request. So ideally, this is housed in their course. It's a quick form that they would just provide their information, first name, last name, the course they're enrolled in, their start date, their instructor, um, and what their questions specifically pertaining to. Um, we narrowed it down to about five or six options that were common questions that we would get from our student population, such as course materials, their grading, instructor communication, um, technical, and we also had an other section as well. Um, we also then just give them a brief um, description box where they can give us with more insight. This would then be emailed to our general inbox. We can respond to the student directly through there, and then we're able to manually sync that. So it's been hugely beneficial. All I can say, I believe all of our student email communication now is housed in Salesforce versus before not much was. Um, another great aspect that we've utilized this ticket system for is collaborating with our instructional design team. Um, with these tickets, we're able to track exactly what course is receiving the most tickets. Inside that course, how many tickets, say 90% are technical, and what those issues are pertaining to. So we have provided that to that team um, to look at future terms and future ways to fix and alleviate those issues. Defining at-risk students. So a majority of our students are at risk in this program, just given the, um, you know, the type of student that we see. This wasn't defined previously. Um, we wouldn't know if a student was really at risk or had a problem until we had to get into that reactive mode. Um, so then we decided to uh, define at risk as students that have not logged into the course within, a, within two weeks, students that are registered for three or more courses, um, and students that have failed or withdrew from a course and is taking it, taking it again. Uh, some of the communication that we do, we will call students that have not been active in the course within two weeks. That's a good way to kind of remind them that the course, you have 16 weeks from the start date, not 16 weeks from when you decide to start the course. Sometimes that clarity can be really helpful. And then also reaching out to the students that are registering for more than two courses. We recommend, we strongly recommend students only take one at a time. Some some do two at a time, um, and then sometimes having that conversation with them when they go to sign up for three courses or four courses is talking out that plan. What is the deadline that you're working towards? Do you realize you could stagger this out a little bit more? So maybe you start with this course on this start date, and maybe in a month from now, you have a good, um, you're ahead in that course and you can begin on the next one. So figuring out a better plan for them. We have found success with students realizing that yes, that is a lot, and that is going to be hard for me to do, and have decided to drop some of the courses with that. Um, looking at students that have failed or withdrawn, this is still something that we're looking, um, that we hope for in the future to have a better reporting system to be able to see this. Right now they're only identified when we notice that as they come through um, our list of, of folks that we reach out to. So moving away from the Blackboard messaging system and utilizing our Salesforce CRM, um, mm -hmm. what we have found is prior to really utilizing the full capacity of it is that we were casually logging calls and emails that came in um, if the student had an account in the system. And this was only creating about 30% of our perspective and enrolled students communications being logged. Um, so if one of us needed to go back to see a previous conversation that another advisor had had with a student, we wouldn't be able to access the full information. Uh, so our new process is to create an account if it doesn't already exist in the system, and then to log every single call and email that comes in to the best of our ability. And with this new process, we've been able to log just about 90%, of course our goal is 100% um, of all communications with our students. And then with these communication numbers, we wanted to see um, what our efforts had looked like over the last two years. So in 2017, when we were just casually logging, we only had about 15,000 communications logged in our Salesforce system. And then this past year from January to date, we have about 50,000 communications logged. And as Melissa stated, our primary communication is through email with our students because that's the best route for them. So that number is astronomically high with 44,000. Um, but we still have our calls and voicemails coming in, which are more on the enrollment side when students are prospective and inquiring about our program. 
looking to the future, future communication and improvements. Our first goal would be um, to have more reporting system within our Salesforce CRM. So right now we're, we're kind of on the tail end of getting all of the things that we need in that system. We look forward to being able to create more reports to get a better sense of how many students are registered maybe for one course at a particular start date or time of the year so that we can maybe help um, utilize that information with the program to gauge um, the number of classes that we need. Also being able to run reports to see if a student has taken a course before, if they failed or withdrew, to be able to know that ahead of time as well. Also to have a better sense potentially of completion rates um, and um, overall completion, how many people complete or not complete the course as well. Second, we would love a way to send mass emails directly through Salesforce, our CRM. Right now, we don't have that capability. Um, as Ashley just discussed previously, we send a lot of emails out. Um, so 44,000 emails, those are manually synced individually. So one by one, we are syncing emails as we send them. So as you can imagine, that's very time consuming. Um, so to find a way to be able to send those directly through our CRM, which would allow for automatic syncing, would save us a lot of time to look at other ways to improve the student support model. And third is, as Melissa has mentioned, being able to track the students who have previously withdrawn or failed a course. So we, um, we, again, don't have a tracking system for this right now. We don't have a report that we can easily run, but it's something we're looking to implement um, with the new upgrades in our system. So thank you very much for taking this time. I know it's a, it's a competition with food right now, but uh, <laughs> if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Have you guys seen a change in the number of withdrawals or petitions since implementing the communication system and giving people like the updated timelines and letting people be a little bit more aware of that process? I will say in terms of uh, the disgruntled students, it, it's been, I think having that communication and, and being more proactive with that has been beneficial and we've heard that from other offices within the university too um, because students are, are more aware. They, you know, they're taking these courses, they're under a lot of stress, so sometimes it's like an impulse purchase where they're like, okay, I can do this, I can start in a week, and maybe then they realize, oh, this is way too much, or this isn't what I needed. So in terms of satisfaction with the students, I think we hear a lot less, and um, probably fewer petitions, I would say, as well, in terms of looking at withdrawing or refund as well. Hi, as an adjunct instructor, is there anything that we can do to help um, your, um, your efforts, such as when we email you about a certain student, about these um, certain milestones that they're not hitting, should we be like copying text from our course message messages into your emails, would that help? Or anything that you could suggest that might help coordinate the process? Because I do a lot of the same checks in with my students as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I think um, at any point, if you have a red flag or you're nervous about a student, not to hesitate to reach out to the support or the advisor with that, associated with that course that can work with the student. A lot of what we do, too, is we'll echo you know, for both sides. So a student may say they're trying to connect with an instructor, and we'll reach out to the instructor and just say, hey, have you heard from the student? They have questions, or vice versa. Um, so it could be somebody that may have missed our radar based on what we're looking at that you could be concerned about, and we can then help you support that student as well. I think it's great for instructors to collaborate yeah. with us as much as they can. Um, we also have, may have additional communication mm -hmm. resources with the students, additional emails, or maybe we have another phone number in case the instructor can't reach them. So uh, instructors should definitely reach out to us whenever we can assist, for yeah. sure. We love being able to build that relationship with mm -hmm. the instructors too, because there are so many in so many courses. So it's really nice for us to be able to, to work together with that process. Yeah, and between our role and the instructor's role, I mean, we're not necessarily looking at their progress in the course as far as grading goes. We're really just looking at how often are they accessing the course. So I know I've had instructors reach out to me saying, this student may be recently accessing the course, but they've only completed two out of the seven weeks so far of their course. Um, so being aware of that information, we can reach out to the student and have that conversation, see what's going on. I will say too on the enrollment side, it's helpful to have conversations with the instructors about the courses. You may have more insight on something that we don't, that students may be asking us about in terms of how that course may meet the needs that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, so it can help us help students on that side of it too. So all around. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. <laughs>